Welcome to the EuroLean Plus lecture series on the design of work cells. This lecture covers layout planning and methods. Once we know what happens in the cells, we can determine the material flows going into the cell and the finished products or intermediate products flowing out of the cell. This will be important information for the layout. So most layout methods use one or more of the data listed here, which are combined in an acronym PQRST, the product, types of products, the quantity of each part, the routing, which means the operation sequence for each part throughout the machines, special services needed, which will determine which additional rooms and areas we need to provide in the layout, and sometimes also timing is important if you have a, a shift operation or very seasonal demand then it can be interesting to look at when we use which machines. Beyond that there are numerous uh, other factors that affect the flow pattern. We have a list here. This information can be gathered from the engineering data which exists in many forms. We'll just go quickly through them. How products are assembled and which parts and components they need is important information. So exploded views can convey this information. The assembly chart tells us the assembly sequence, the operations process chart, which is a slightly different way of showing the same information, combining both assembly components and the processes, which are circles in this chart. The flow process chart, which looks more in detail to the processes at each workstation and between workstations and already identifies storage requirements, transport requirements and so on. And of course for demand analysis we need the demand per year of each product and we will mostly show it in a PQ chart or a Pareto chart where you can clearly see that products PFCJ amount for almost 50% of the volume. We also can classify products based on their technical characteristics and from that we can use either intuitive grouping based on the experience of the people or we can use a classification scheme that will formalize these characteristics and obviously is more suited for large amounts of products. Production flow analysis will look at the flow patterns that emerge from the production sequence or the machines that are used and we'll try to group them into homogeneous cells. Intuitive grouping obviously will look at the type of parts but also the type of processes. The problem with intuitive grouping is that it is not easy to replicate across different people. The most widely used code-based grouping is the group technology code. It is a standard codification that tries to describe the characteristics of a product using code sequences and different types of products have different code systems. For instance, this is an example for a casted product. It should be obvious that products that have similar characteristics will have similar codes on these positions and computers can easily sort them out. Here you see a visual example of such a coding. In the flow analysis, we'll use as data source the product machine matrix or product machine incidence matrix, where for each product at the left, we indicate which machine at the top is needed to perform one or more processes. In this matrix, there is no sequence information encoded. If we regroup the rows and columns in the matrix, we can cluster them hopefully into homogeneous subparts which indicate the possibility of creating a cell that will cover the machine in the block and produce the products that are linked to it. And we also see that the heat read doesn't really belong to one unique cell which leaves us with the option to either keep it separate as a shared resource or split it up, duplicate it and then assign one of each to separate cells. Thank you for watching this video on layout planning and methods. Please join us in the next video where we will discuss how to quantify flow using the flow dominance measure. To learn more about other lean techniques for customized manufacturing, please visit euroleanplus.org.